Hello, my name is Jed Morgan. I work at the Nikon Group and I'm part of the IQPBX uh, pre and post sales support team. I'm going to be conducting some WebExes for engineers in the field in order to install and configure the IQPBX platform. Uh, we'll deal with architecture, hardware, installation, configuration, and we'll do some troubleshooting in uh, subsequent WebExes. But for the first one, we're going to start with hardware and architecture. So, without further ado, we'll look at the um, platforms that we do with IQPBX. First one is a smallish router style uh, plastic box. And then we have our 19 inch rack mount 600 and 2000. Uh, the 19 inch rack mount systems are one new in height and sit back into the system about 170 millimeters deep approximately. Each of the systems has card slot locations inside and in the 250 there are two card slot locations and the 600 there are eight and in the 2000 there are four card slot locations. Um, card slots uh, vari variable, it doesn't matter which card you fit in which slot except for the GSM gateways. We do a GSM gateway module, a single SIM GSM gateway and you can have up to four in the 600 and four in the 2000. In the 600 the GSM gateways sit into the last four slots on the main board which I'll describe a little later. All the connections to the system are located on the back as are the power supply connections and LAN1 interfaces. So first of all, uh, unpack your IQ PBX so we don't power on the system as yet. We don't even plug the mains lead in if we have any cards to install in the system. Uh, unscrew the case with the screws at the side, remove the lid and you'll have access to the inside of the system where you can see on the main board where the cards are located. Please observe anti-static precautions when dealing with the cards as they can be easily damaged as can the main board. So observing anti-stat precautions, um, we'll look at the modules. So the first module we'll look at is, they're all colour coded as you can see anyway. The first one is the green one, an FXS, which is two analogue extensions. The second one is a red one for analogue trunks, FXO and we have a combination of FXO, FXS, analog extension and an analog trunk on the same on the same module. Uh, this also acts as a power fail in the system. If there's a power cut to the system or it loses power, the analog extension will be connected to the uh, to the analog trunk automatically. ISDN2 BRI module is a yellow in color and provides two ISDN2 circuits, four channels. So you can see we've got colour coordination for ease of recognition and installing them as I said before this is an exploded view of a 600 with the eight slots on the main board. The last four would be used for any GSM gateways that you would like to install. On the front of the system there are LEDs and these LEDs indicate which module you have in that connection. So for example position 1 here would have ports 1 and 2 so on the front ports 1 and 2 correspond to whatever's in that module slot there. So for example if it was an analog trunk card the LEDs on the front of the system would indicate red on ports 1 and 2 and so on. So if we had an analog extension card in position 2 in here and then ports 3 and 4 would have green LEDs and if we had a combination card you would have a green LED and a red LED. So from the front of the system from an engineer's point of view he goes into the site he can see via the LEDs what modules are installed in the system. Just a bit of an aid as to what's actually in there. Also, as things are happening on the circuit, so if an, if an analog, analog trunk is ringing, it flashes at a different rate. So we've also got 
bit of diagnostic indication as to what's happening on the ports themselves. All the connections on the back of the system here are RJ11. Basically they work on the two middle pins for analog devices, analog trunks, analog extensions. They work on the middle two pins in the RJ11 for making the connection. And basic rate connections use the four pins as the four wire circuits. GSM units just simply have a connection to the aerial which is connected to the back of the casing on the system via the pre-drilled holes where a locating nut and washer secure the aerial to the casing and a small connection is made to the module where you insert the sim. Um, as we look down here we have an indication as to the correct and incorrect connections made on the on the trunks on the relevant modules. Here are diagrams of the actual cards being installed on the motherboard and it's very important to get the pins located and aligned correctly into the connector blocks on the motherboard. If you misalign the connections here as this one is it will damage physically damage the card and the motherboard so you must must make sure that the pins are aligned and located properly in the blocks before you add any supply any power to the system um, even if you're changing a sim card so we said that gsm gate eight gateways were single sim if you wish to replace a sim card again any form of opening the casing involves powering down the system so cards are not hot swappable must power down the system to prevent any damage even if you're replacing a SIM card. That's the hardware that we can install in the IQ PBX. The only other piece of hardware on, or architecture we can install in the, two, in the IQ PBX is within the 2000 where we offer full call recording, full automatic call recording and to achieve this we must have a SATA hard drive installed in the 2000 so that's a prerequisite for call recording is to have a, a SATA 500 gig hard drive installed in the system. There are model numbers indicated here that have been tried and tested but other um, relevant and corresponding models have been known to work. So these are the recommended ones it's entirely up to you if you find a subsequent model that may work that's okay but support wouldn't be provided if it wasn't one of the recommended ones so to install the hard drive again power down the system remove the lid removing the screws and with each 2000 you'll receive a caddy with eight screws and we connect the caddy to the hard drive as per the figure 2 here and we mount the caddy onto the chassis inside the 2000 with the four remaining screws making the connections to the main board for the SATA lead and the power lead and there's a connection from the main board to the power supply to provide power so there's an exploded view of a 2000 with a SATA hard disk in place. Once it's in place, replace the lid, replace the screws, resupply the power to the system and log on to the system and go into the settings, external storage and there you can see that the system has seen the hard drive installed and indicates that it's ready to go. So hardware, its architecture, to recap safety factors, anti-static precautions, cards can go in any slot except the GSM gateways, they fit in the last four slots on the 600 and the four, any of the four slots on the 2000. Okay, that's the hardware covered in this first first WebEx. So I look forward to speaking to you in the next one where we start to get into the system. Okay, many thanks.
speak to you soon.